Hi, hello, I'm Robert Emmett Hernan. I'm head of Blue Stack Productions, Inc., the publisher of Irish Environment, an online resource for environmental matters on the island of Ireland. We're here today in another of our series of conversations on environmental matters, and today I'm very pleased to welcome Pat Murphy. Pat, you're very welcome. Thank you very much. Uh, Pat is the head of the Environment Transfer Knowledge Department at, uh, at Chagas, which is an Irish word for teaching or education. Yes. And it's the, in effect, the Agricultural and Food Development Authority. Uh, and Pat, why don't you tell our audience uh, what it is and what you do? Okay, the uh, Chagask uh, is involved in uh, a number of different aspects of agricultural development. Uh, we have three main functions, agricultural research or agricultural and food research, uh, agricultural advisory services, and agricultural education, uh, vocational education uh, to uh, new farmers. Uh, the, we have about 100, or sorry, 1,300 staff in, in total uh, across those three uh, uh, functions. Mm -hmm. uh, we're based right around the country. We have uh, advisory offices, about 60 advisory offices around the country. Uh, we operate uh, uh, five agricultural colleges and uh, the research is run out of uh, six uh, main research centres. Mm -hmm. uh, so we, we, ha we uh, uh, serve the combined needs of the agricultural community for uh, research, advice and training delivered in an integrated way to, to farmers. And, and, and Pat, what's the, give the audience a sense of the importance of the farming or food sector within the Irish economy. Farming is, uh, 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 traditionally in Ireland, was the mainstay of the Irish economy. Over the last 30 years that has, has diminished uh, quite a bit, but is still a very important uh, component of, of the economy. Uh, it's responsible for about, I think, 10% of GNP, but if you look at it from the perspective of the uh, actual income generated from agriculture, it's, it's much higher because of the high proportion of the GNP that stays within the, 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 the country, that stays within the system. So it's a, it still is, is, is important. And given the downturn in some of the other industries, is seen as being uh, an area of, of potential growth over the next number of years. And what percentage of exports are attributed to the agricultural food sector? Uh, roughly, I think it's about thirteen percent mm -hmm. of the uh, gross exports. But mm -hmm. again, if you look at it from mm -hmm. the perspective of the import component of that, it's very low in agriculture mm -hmm. relative to other industries. Mm -hmm. So, in terms of net exports, it's closer to twenty percent. And, and I, as we were talking earlier, I remember from the 1970s, even before the common market, that something like 70% of the population was engaged with farming. And what's that about now? The, the proportion is, is much lower. Mm -hmm. We have uh, uh, about 115,000 mm -hmm. uh, full-time and part-time farmers, uh, uh, which out of a population of, of 4 million, of uh, 4.5 million now is, uh, and a working population of just under 2 million. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're down to uh, mm -hmm. a relatively small proportion of the mm -hmm. workforce, uh, eight or nine per, or seven or eight percent in, in agriculture at this point. Okay. Now, uh, Pat, the, the economic side is, 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 uh, is the positive side for farming, but we also want to talk today about the, the adverse consequences of farming. And, and um, I'm particularly interested in spending the time with you talking about the commonality of interest between the farming sector and the environmental community, which in the past has been at odds with one another from time to time. Yep. But I think, we, I think it's would be useful for us to explore w what has changed in that regard and, and where we are now. But let's at first lay out on the table what kind of environmental impacts there are from farming. Okay. And, and then we can address how uh, the authority is dealing with those. So what, what are some of those environmental I suppose that the, the, two, the three most uh, prominent issues in relation to uh, farming and the environment relate to uh, the impact of, of farming on water quality. Mm -hmm. Uh, th this has been an issue where there has been deterioration uh, in water quality over the last 20-30 uh, years and uh, I think it's taken uh, some time for agriculture to realise that there, it is part of, of the, the, the problem of, of uh, reducing water quality. I think in, in the last while uh, action has been taken to, uh, to um, remedy that and mm -hmm. a lot of work has been done and we can talk about that a little bit later. Mm -hmm. The emerging area is, re is in relation to greenhouse gases. 29% uh, of uh, Irish national greenhouse gases come from the agricultural uh, sector and, and particularly from enteric fermentation of cows. Mm -hmm. So it's a, a, a major concern. 
And I think the third uh, big area of concern relates to uh, biodiversity, and mm -hmm. that's the uh, uh, trying to achieve the objective that's set at European level to halt biodiversity mm -hmm. loss uh, fr from uh, the, the countryside is, is a, a major problem. Mm -hmm. Biodiversity has been reducing uh, right throughout Europe and right throughout the world, and it's, it's something that, that uh, farming has a role to play. In fact, the 29% of greenhouse gas emissions from um, the farming communities compares to what about nine percent in the EU on the yeah. average? It's, it's a lot lower. We're because again we have a very high proportion of our uh, uh, industry if you want in the broader okay. sense is, is agriculture. Mm -hmm. Yeah we have a very high percentage of, uh, of greenhouse gases relative to other countries which makes uh, makes it a, a particular problem for us mm -hmm. because agricultural greenhouse gases are much more difficult to mitigate than, than other areas of, of industry. Uh, and that's going to be a problem that we're going to have to face in the future. And, and we'll certainly come to that very shortly, I think, when we talk about the Harvest 2020. Uh, and I would point out too, I think, I think Northern Ireland is comparable, it's about 23% of their emissions. Similar, similar enough, yeah. Yeah, a very similar economy. Now, um, what is driving the farming community towards uh, environmental improvement? I think there's, there's two major uh, drivers, if you want, mm -hmm. or well, you could argue three, three drivers. Mm -hmm. Uh, one is, is if you want a legislative framework which has recognised that there are issues out there that need to be dealt with and are being dealt with through uh, um, primarily legislation and uh, the requirement for cross compliance in relation to the single farm payment. Mm -hmm. So that has uh, set, if you want, a, a baseline set of, of uh, economic, uh, uh, um, economically connected uh, legislation. Uh, by which farmers have to farm if they want to get their, their single uh, payment. Mm -hmm. There are then uh, a series of other legislations such as the Nitrates Action Plan, the, the Nitrates Framework Directive, uh, where uh, legisl or, yeah, legislative requirements are, are put in place to limit certain activities on farms such as the amount of, uh, of nitrogen and other fertilizer that can be used in, in, in production. Mm -hmm. uh, the other, um, I suppose, uh, main element of a, a policy uh, uh, initiative is the agricultural, uh, sorry, the agri-environmental schemes mm -hmm. which operate to incentivize farmers to do, uh, to take on board environmental actions, positive environmental actions. Uh, in, uh, for a period of, of 16 years we had the, the REP scheme uh, which has been replaced in recent years by the Agri-Environmental Option Scheme or the AOS scheme mm -hmm. uh, and those pay farmers uh, for specific environmental outcomes. And I think the third issue there and cannot be forgotten is the, uh, the inherent desire among farmers to uh, improve the environment. They see themselves to a large degree as the guardians of the environment, of the, lar of the guardians of the rural environment. Mm -hmm. And I think farmers want, um, the vast bulk of farmers want to do what's right uh, uh, to improve environmental conditions. So I think those are the three uh, drivers. One is, is a, a legislative, if you want, it's the stick approach, there's the carrot approach in terms of uh, agri-environmental schemes, and then there's the mm -hmm. desire to do the right thing. You know, Pat, one of the, I, I'd always thought, and I think many people did, that the Rural Environment Protection Scheme, the REPS, was a, a, a very fundamentally successful program. Um, and, and what's your sense, of, uh, while that program's now ended, what's your mm -hmm. sense of the legacy of that program within the farming community? There's an, a number of things. I think there's a lot of work has been done in terms of, of uh, improving our water quality. Uh, that's directly as a result of the uh, nutrient management planning that was inherent in, in that program. But I think the biggest long-term impact and the biggest long-term legacy is going to be the change in attitudes of farmers. I think there is a, a change in, in, in a period of 10-12 years. There is an acceptance by farmers that agriculture does have an impact uh, on the environment. Mm -hmm. There is uh, a realization that agriculture done correctly uh, doesn't have to have uh, very much of an impact and that impact through proper management can be uh, minimized. And I think there's, an, uh, there's a growing acceptance among farmers that 
uh, environmental issues don't necessarily have to uh, operate against commercial farming all the time, that, that with proper management the two can uh, work side by side.